The American Forests by John Muir The forests of America, however slighted by man, must have been a great delight to God, for they were the best he ever planted. The whole continent was a garden, and from the beginning it seemed to be favored above all the other wild parks and gardens of the globe. To prepare the ground, it was rolled and sifted in seas, with infinite loving deliberation and forethought, lifted into the light, submerged and warmed, over and over again, pressed and crumpled into folds and ridges, mountains and hills, subsoiled with heaving volcanic fires, plowed and ground and sculptured into scenery and soil with glaciers and rivers, every feature growing and changing from beauty to beauty, higher and higher. And in the fullness of time, it was planted in groves and belts and broad, exuberant, mantling forests with the largest, most varied, most fruitful and most beautiful trees in the world. Bright seas made its border with wave embroidery and icebergs. Gray deserts were outspread in the middle of it, mossy tundras on the north, savannas on the south, and blooming prairies and plains, while lakes and rivers shone through all the vast forests and openings, and happy birds and beasts gave delightful animation. Everywhere, everywhere over all the blessed continent there were beauty and melody and kindly, wholesome, foodful abundance. These forests were composed of about 500 species of trees, all of them in some way useful to man, ranging in size from 25 feet in height and less than one foot in diameter at the ground to 400 feet in height and more than 20 feet in diameter. Lordly monarchs proclaiming the gospel of beauty like apostles. For many a century after the ice plows were melted, nature fed them and dressed them every day, working like a man, a loving, devoted, painstaking gardener, fingering every leaf and flower and mossy furrowed bowl, bending, trimming, modeling, balancing, painting them with the loveliest colors, bringing over them now clouds with cooling shadows and showers, now sunshine, fanning them with gentle winds and rustling their leaves, exercising them in every fiber with storms and pruning them, loading them with flowers and fruit, loading them with snow, and ever making them more beautiful as the years rolled by. Wide branching oak and elm in endless variety, walnut and maple, chestnut and beech, ilex and locust, touching limb to limb, spread a leafy translucent canopy along the coast of the Atlantic, over the wrinkled folds and ridges of the Alleghenies, a green billowy sea in summer, golden and purple in autumn, pearly gray like a steadfast frozen mist of interlacing branches and sprays in leafless, restful winter. To the southward stretched dark, level-topped cypresses in knobby, tangled swamps, grassy savannas in the midst of them like lakes of light, groves of gay, sparkling spice trees, magnolias, and palms, glossy-leaved and blooming and shining continually. To the northward, over Maine and the Ottawa, rose hosts of spiry, rosiny evergreens, white pine and spruce, hemlock and cedar, shoulder to shoulder, laden with purple cones, their myriad needles sparkling and shimmering, covering hills and swamps, rocky headlands and domes, ever bravely aspiring and seeking the sky, the ground in their shade, now snow-clad and frozen, now mossy and flowery, beaver meadows here and there, full of lilies and grass, 
lakes gleaming like eyes and a silvery embroidery of rivers and creeks watering and brightening all the vast, glad wilderness. Thence westward were oak and elm, hickory and tupelo, gum and liriodendron, sassafras and ash, linden and laurel, spreading on ever wider in glorious exuberance over the great fertile basin of the Mississippi, over damp level bottoms, low dimpling hollows, and round dotting hills, embosoming sunny prairies and cheery park openings, half sunshine, half shade, while a dark wilderness of pines covered the region around the Great Lakes. Then still westward swept the forests to right and left around grassy plains and deserts a thousand miles wide, irrepressible hosts of spruce and pine, aspen and willow, nut pine and juniper, cactus and yucca, caring nothing for drought, extending undaunted from mountain to mountain over mesa and desert to join the darkening multitudes of pines that covered the high rocky ranges and the glorious forests along the coast of the moist and balmy Pacific, where new species of pine giant cedars and spruces, silver firs and sequoias, kings of their race, growing close together like grass in a meadow, poised their brave domes and spires in the sky three hundred feet above the ferns and lilies that enameled the ground, towering serene through the long centuries, preaching God's forestry fresh from heaven. Here the forests reached their highest development. Hence they went wavering northward over icy Alaska, brave spruce and fir, poplar and birch, by the coasts and the rivers to within sight of the Arctic Ocean, American forests, the glory of the world. Surveyed thus, from the east to the west, from the north to the south, they are rich beyond thought, immortal, immeasurable, enough and to spare for every feeding, sheltering beast and bird, insect and son of Adam. And nobody need have cared had there been no pines in Norway, no cedars and deodars on Lebanon and the Himalayas, no vine-clad selvas in the basin of the Amazon. With such variety, harmony, and triumphant exuberance, even nature, it would seem, might have rested content with the forests of North America and planted no more. <laughs>